article provoked a violent reaction in Mexico. Since then, the National Ecology Institute has confirmed the contamination of Mexican corn. Roundup Ready and BT genes have been found in corn from five regions of the country. What would happen if bioengineered corn crossed with traditional land races? Dr. Alberas Buya led a study using a local flower. She inserted the same gene in several specimens and then observed their growth. We observed that two plants, strictly identical from a genetic point of view, in other words, they both have the same genome, the same chromosomes and the same transgene. The only difference is that the transgene is located in different places. And well, once they grew, these plants presented a phenotype. That is to say, flower shapes that were very different. Some have flowers that are identical to their natural counterparts, like here, four petals with four sepals. But others have abnormal flowers with abnormal hair or strange petals. In addition, some are completely monstrous. The only difference in all of these plants is the location of the transgene, which was inserted randomly. Why is that worrisome? In Mexico, once the transgenic corn seeds have been released into the environment, it's very likely that the transgenes will insert themselves into the genomes of the local Mexican varieties. It's an unavoidable phenomenon, because corn plants cross naturally by wind-blown pollen. Given that, we fear that the genetic resources of traditional corn will be uncontrollably affected. Good morning. We invite you to attend a meeting about the new diseases which are infecting our corn because of transgenic contamination. Aldo heads an organization of indigenous people. For two years, he's been leading an information campaign in Oaxaca communities, where Elena Alberas fears have already been confirmed in the fields. I'm going to show you some photos of some corn plants that we took in our region of Sierra Juarez. We'd like to know if you have already seen this type of plant in your community. You can see that some very strange things are going on. This plant, for example, has a branch here and another one there. Normally, a corn plant is not like that. There is always only one ear per leaf. But look here. There are three ears coming out of the same leaf. They are really monsters. We sent a plant sample to a biotech lab to see if maybe it contained genetically modified genes. Unfortunately, the test came out positive. Usually, we see these types of plants along the roadside or in people's yards. It's possible that people buy corn in the shop and they drop some kernels while walking. Some kernels germinate. This is how traditional corn became contaminated. From what you've said, if we don't manage to stop their spread in our fields, Soon, we'll be forced to buy our corn seed because our own won't work anymore. That's very troubling. What should we do? First of all, if you find a strange plant, you should immediately remove its stamen, because that's where its pollen comes from. In any case, you must be very vigilant in monitoring your plants. Don't you think it's Monsanto's strategy, what they couldn't achieve legally, they are trying to force through contamination? Yes, we end up wondering if the contamination wasn't intentional. 
If the center of origin of corn becomes contaminated, the rest of the planet could follow. Contamination only benefits multinationals like Monsanto. How did Monsanto react to Ignacia Chapella's study on Mexican corn contamination? Monsanto's Dirty Tricks campaign against fired Berkeley professor Ignacio Chapella. An article by Jonathan Matthews, who heads GM Watch, a GMO information service based in southern England. According to Jonathan Matthews, Ignacio Chapella was a victim of a campaign launched on AgBioWorld, a pro-GMO internet site. On the eve of the article's publication in Nature, a certain Mary Murphy posted an email that AgBioWorld distributed to thousands of scientists around the world. She wrote, Activists will certainly run wild with news that Mexican corn has been contaminated by genes from GM corn. The very next day, a certain Andorra Smetacek posted a second email. Activist first, scientist second. It's totally a smear campaign. And this is what happens over the first couple of days. You get Murphy and Smetacek coming in, then others come in and they say, we have to campaign on this. We have to inundate nature. We have to go to the editor of the journal and we have to say this research isn't valid. Smetacek and Murphy, we'd, we'd been tracking them for some time and trying to work out who they were. In the case of Smetacek, we can look at the technical headers on the email. It says received from and then we've got an internet protocol address. If we go off to a website registration site. Now all we have to do is just to copy that IP address. Organization name Monsanto Company and based in St. Louis. Then Mary Murphy left behind um, details that um, it enabled us to, to track who she was. So if, if we look look here at the information that appeared posted by Mary Murphy and then we get the IP address bw6.bivwood.com when we found that that was the original name of a PR agency called the Bivings Group we quickly found out that on their client list was Monsanto that this was an internet PR firm for Monsanto that means fake scientists what are dirty tricks? Yeah, no, no, we're talking very dirty tricks here. Yeah, I mean, there, 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 there's no ethics at all in, in, in what's going on here. It shows an organization that is determined to push its products into countries around the world, and it's determined to destroy the reputation of anybody who stands in their way. Jonathan Matthews' accusations were covered in the British press, but Monsanto chose to ignore them. As it continues its unrelenting rise, the company defends its vision of a transgenic world that will resolve the problems of famine and the environment in perfect harmony. Practical experience clearly demonstrates that the coexistence of biotech, conventional and organic systems is not only possible, but is peacefully occurring around the world. I see trees of green. Imagine a world that preserves the nature, the air, the rivers. Que a gente possa produzir mais com menos agrotóxicos, sem desmatar as florestas. Você pensa num mundo com transgênicos? Uma iniciativa Monsanto com o apoio da Associação Brasileira de Nutrologia. A transgenic world already exists in South America, where 100 million acres of Roundup Ready soybeans were planted in 2007. 
Their conquest started 10 years ago in Argentina, the only country to have officially authorized transgenic crops. Since then, GMOs have mysteriously spread to neighboring countries like Brazil and Paraguay seen here. In 2005, Paraguay finally legalized these smuggled crops to save their soybean exports to Europe, where labeling GMOs is obligatory. In reality, for the Ministry of Agriculture, the deed had already been done. We had to authorize GMO seeds because they had already entered our country in a, let's say, unorthodox way. Do you know how transgenic seeds entered the country? Through the black market or smuggling? We don't speak, we don't speak about the black market, but about the blank sack, because these are the seed sacks that have no official markings. Did Monsanto play a role in this seed contraband? It is possible that the company, let's say, promoted its varieties and its seeds, and as I told you, the government had to react after the fact to authorize what was already a reality. Whatever the origin, contraband has been profitable for Monsanto. As soon as the crops were legalized, the company obtained the right to collect royalties on each ton of soybeans the country produced. Just like in Brazil. Since then, there has been no let-up in Paraguay's deforestation and the expulsion of many small farmers who refuse to relinquish their small plots of land. Jorge Galeano leads a small farmers organization which is fighting against the progression of what he calls the Green Desert. What we have here is an example of a GM extension of soybeans. In fact, it's a monocrop that destroys everything in its path. Before here, there were fields containing everything that a family needed to live. Plants, trees, manioc, corn. Do you think that the GM crop can coexist with the crops of the small farmers? No, we are sure it can't. There are two incompatible models that can't coexist. It's a silent war that eliminates communities and families of small farmers. In addition, it destroys the biodiversity of the countryside. It brings death, poverty, and illness, as well as the destruction of the natural resources that help us live. Today, Roundup is sprayed all over Paraguay by plane or mechanical spreaders driven by unprotected farm workers. The herbicide is sprayed right up to people's front doors or near the subsistence crops of small farmers. Every year, crops are destroyed and thousands of people contaminated. Like this family, which is surrounded by Monsanto's GMOs. The parents are worried about their son Pedro because every day he has to cross the soybean fields to sell his mother's homemade corn tortillas. How long has he had that? It started 15 days ago. It started on his foot and then it spread. That's how it starts. Does he have a headache? Is he eating? Very little. Today he didn't want to eat what I prepared for him. He only drank a little fruit juice. And his brother? He eats better, but it's difficult. That's the way we live. Recently, we lost 60 ducks and geese. They took a few steps, and then they fell down, dead as doornails. They spray deadly herbicide over there. 
And when it rains, the water streams down here, and since 